Speaker on Nirmala Sitaraman's first budget in the Modi government's second term that will be presented on the 5th of July. What should be the focus of this budget? Will this budget take off from the interim budget that Piyush Goel presented before the elections? Will there be a focus on growth to kickstart an economy that is clearly slowing down? Can we afford a stimulus package though? Undoubtedly, this will be a challenging budget to balance. Speaking to us now on what he would hope to see in this budget is Arvind Panagriya, former VC, Niti Aayog. Mr. Panagriya, thank you so much for speaking to us on the India development debate. Uh, let's start uh, by talking about um, what an interesting and challenging time for Nirmala Sitaraman to present her first budget as finance minister. Indeed, it is uh, because, you know, growth uh, in the last quarter for which we have the numbers did uh, uh, fall below 6%, 5.8%. Uh, and uh, that decline has been uh, happening for almost four quarters now. Uh, so it does pose a big challenge. Uh, it is also uh, coming on the back of a very, very big mandate to Prime Minister Modi. Uh, so certainly in that sense, it is a challenge. Um, but at the same time, you know, every challenge comes with an opportunity, as the saying goes. Uh, and so, you know, I would expect that uh, as the Finance Minister would rise to the occasion and uh, present a budget which uh, uh, brings growth back, uh, private investment also uh, is stimulated and, uh, uh, you know, the emphasis on infrastructure continuing. Okay. Um, you know, there's this whole debate going on whether the focus should be on growth or fiscal consolidation. There is a point of view that even if we breach 3.4% this time around, it's okay considering that the economy is going through a slowdown and a boost is more important. What's your view on this, Mr. Panagre? I personally don't think that there is a conflict between fiscal consolidation and uh, uh, growth. Uh, 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 I continue to believe that fiscal consolidation should actually continue. Uh, 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 and certainly we should not breach the uh, existing fiscal deficit. I don't expect that the government will do that either. Um, uh, uh, because, uh, uh, you know, growth doesn't depend only on the government uh, 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 running large deficits. Uh, our emphasis on uh, infrastructure is the right one uh, and uh, expenditures can still be shifted towards uh, infrastructure which means you know towards capital so uh, that uh, feature can be strengthened by simply uh, 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 reallocating expenditures towards uh, uh, what we may call capital expenditures but largely infrastructure uh, so in this sense, then the uh, 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 you know the cap the the, the uh, 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 capex cycle right, as far as the government is concerned continues to uh, be uh, uh, given the boost. Uh, but at the same time, you know you don't want to crowd out the private sector. After all, uh, uh, private sector investment is very important, and if the government really uh, uh, soaks up large part of the financial savings that are available. Uh, and that would leave the private sector high and dry. And a lot of the high productivity investments do come from private sector. So I, I think, you know, I, I, I see no conflict really here uh, between uh, the uh, growth objective and the fiscal consolidation and fiscal discipline. Uh, another big challenge, of course, is, uh, you know, the rollout and the funding for big welfare schemes uh, that uh, uh, the government announced before the elections in the interim budget. Uh, and, uh, of course, some steps uh, announced right after the elections, like the expansion of the ambit of the PM Kisan scheme, for example. Ayushman Bharat uh, will expect uh, even a larger, more comprehensive rollout this time round. Uh, and there seems little chance... Uh, that the Modi government would want to lose, uh, you know, the goodwill from its welfare schemes. How challenging do you see that? Challenge is there, but you know, I have uh, argued that there are a lot of other uh, centrally sponsored schemes at which the government ought to look. Uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, there are wasteful expenditures within the system in many of those schemes. Uh, we ought to take a closer look at those. Uh, you know, I, I have argued now that uh, we ought to think and begin to think in terms of uh, a sunset uh, on these schemes uh, and, and ask the ministries to justify. Uh, so, you know, I totally feel that we do need to, we will need to expand expenditure on Ayushman Bharat. Uh, 
uh, that is a very well conceived program, uh, except for it actually requires a lot more uh, expenditure, a lot, lot more financing than we currently have for it. Uh, so some of these will be, PM Kisan is not a huge challenge because on the margin what has been added is a small amount. Uh, uh, so some uh, thought needs to be given. Also on the, the social schemes or the uh, 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 welfare schemes, uh, I not take the view that uh, now we should really uh, uh, look back, sit back and consolidate. Uh, you know, there is a lot of these schemes that are there. Uh, to maximize the benefit, we need to do a bit of consolidation, also a bit of audit. Uh, you know what is working well, what is not working well, uh, rather than you know continuously expand them on demand. Uh, obviously, India is a large country; it's a diverse country, uh, so there are demands that come from all kinds of quarters. Uh, but the government has to be pragmatic and uh, so consolidate uh, uh, and uh, uh, make them more efficient uh, is the way to go. Let's talk a bit about, uh, you know, the farm sector and rural distress. Uh, we've seen one clear kind of um, effort to boost um, agricultural uh, incomes with the PM Kisan Yojana. So that is more of an income support scheme. Uh, do you see a lot more coming in uh, in this budget in terms of actual spends and not announcements of schemes? Because we've seen a lot of announcements on schemes. Uh, do you think that that is something that cannot be deferred at this point and will be a, a focus and a priority? You see, here also, what will happen and what should happen, maybe two different things, but uh, I can only focus on what should happen. Uh, once again, uh, you know, we need to increase the element of uh, investment, public investment in agriculture, uh, as opposed to uh, uh, the government expenditures on agriculture. Uh, and, and that, of course, means that, you know, rejigging of a lot of the current expenditures, uh, uh, some of the subsidies that uh, benefit only the rich, you know, I mean, really look at the fertilizer subsidy, uh, something needs to be done there. Uh, we uh, uh, have sort of put it on the back burner, but the discussion has to be done uh, exactly how to reject in a way that you reduce some of that uh, uh, spend on uh, fertilizers of the day. Uh, uh, and similarly, some of the others, you know. So what we need to do, what had happened in the 1990s and uh, 2000s was that a lot of, uh, that, uh, particularly in the 1990s, and that process continued uh, later on, uh, is that uh, what we used to public expenditure came to be replaced by savings, meaning the resources got take, uh, came to be uh, uh, replaced by uh, transfers. Uh, 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 and, you know, so public expenditure suffered as a result. We increased the subsidies with, uh, on uh, fertilizer, uh, electricity, water, uh, uh, others. Uh, uh, so, you know, rather than uh, uh, doing public expenditure in agriculture, which is what we did in the 1980s, uh, we have shifted to these subsidies. Uh, but we need to rethink. We need to take it a look back, you know, see how to raise public investment in agriculture rather than subsidies. Okay. Um, you know, let me come to the elephant in the room, uh, jobs and uh, unemployment uh, and boosting uh, that sector of the economy. Um, it became such a political question that people have stopped talking about it after the elections as if with the elections the basic issue of providing employment to millions of Indians and those who are graduating every year or entering the job market has now disappeared. Um, what do you think the government should do to boost this or should we take the age-old sort of uh, uh, you know, uh, commonsensical view that first you boost private investment and then the jobs will follow automatically? Uh, no, I don't think we can take uh, that sort of passive attitude towards it. Uh, let me first state uh, uh, what I have uh, stated many times, that the problem is not so much jobs, but it is good jobs. Jobs that pay well, uh, uh, jobs that are characterized by high productivity. And this is where I think, you know, we really need to get back, get on to uh, a, a, an export-centered strategy. Uh, uh, virtually every country that has succeeded uh, in achieving uh, uh, the objective of good jobs uh, alongside high and rapid growth uh, has done so by succeeding in the global markets. Uh, uh, ultimately, and our own success, by the way, you know, when we look back, uh, uh, starting from 2003-04, uh, when we really grew 8% plus, uh, uh, was built on very successful export sector. Uh, within a matter of less than a decade, we went from $50 billion of merchandise exports to $300 billion, uh, uh, you know, a six-fold expansion. 
So uh, we need to return to that. We need to center our uh, uh, efforts on uh, very much uh, the, the exports. And that means getting your exchange rate right. Get, that means uh, uh, doing the reforms that uh, would uh, allow the medium and large firms to flourish. Uh, at, 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 at trying to woo the uh, multinationals that are today leaving uh, at the, uh, at, at the Chinese uh, shores uh, to other countries, uh, 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 to our shores, you know, so what, uh, do whatever it will take uh, to bring them there. Uh, uh, and uh, I've also talked about, you know, these autonomous employment zones now, uh, where you uh, create uh, large uh, regions uh, with autonomy in policy, uh, with respect to labor, land, etc., uh, so that they can operate in a sort of more uh, competitive environment uh, for the firms. Uh, 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 and, and so, these are the kind of things we need to do uh, to ultimately create good jobs, uh, because you know, large number of our workers are simply employed either in agriculture or they are in self-employment in industry and services, uh, or in uh, companies that are, you know, five workers or fewer. Uh, even the latest data from the PLFS report show that 75% of our uh, non-agricultural workers are in uh, uh, companies that are 19 workers or fewer. Uh, so, I, I, you know, these are small firms that uh, are, uh, don't have such high productivity. Uh, so, you know, I, I said that, you know, uh, 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 because micro and small uh, employ a lot of people doesn't mean that that's where you want to keep pushing more and more workers. You want the workers to come out of micro and small into medium and large. And that requires an export centered strategy. You know, last question to you, Mr. Panagreya. We, we started by talking about uh, how uh, challenging this is going to be for the finance minister when she stands up on the 5th of July. What would be uh, the top three things that you would like to see in this first budget of hers? You know, so uh, I mean, my sense now is that you know, big things may not get announced in the budget, uh, that, and I would certainly not take the signal that uh, if they're not announced in the budget, they'll not happen. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, we all have our wish list, so <laughs> let me uh, put maybe three things you asked. So I would like to see first GST simplification uh, so at least some sort of announcement that this is where we are going uh, uh, hopefully just with two very clean rates you know we can have five percent and eighteen percent so uh, consolidate twelve percent and twenty eight percent both into eighteen percent so that will be my first uh, second uh, I think it is be a good time to make good on uh, the promise made earlier uh, to bring the corporate profit tax down to twenty five percent and uh, clean you know twenty five percent with more other surcharges, uh, but all exemptions removed. So, you know, the tax the revenue will not decline. And I would say the third uh, thing I would like to see uh, in the budget announced is uh, uh, a, a clear statement that the government is going to genuinely privatize many of the PSUs. Uh, uh, there has been generally consensus within the cabinet at least uh, uh, on this, uh, which has approved 40 plus uh, public sector enterprises. Uh, and of course, Air India. Uh, so all that uh, uh, these uh, 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 enterprises, where uh, there is no public purpose served, uh, uh, largely those are activities that can be undertaken in the private sector uh, or to be privatized. So that would be my third. Uh, uh, Absolutely. Thank you so much for speaking with us, uh, Mr. Panagreya, there with his wish list for the budget, and uh, I'm sure the finance minister has. Uh, a ton of wish lists right now on her table, but this can't be an easy one uh, to put out there. Uh, the important takeaway though, not everything is going to happen in the budget. We will expect though to see a roadmap for the next five years that this government will put through. Thank you so much for joining us.